the arcade wasn't a place just to go and play the games. It was also a place to go and be with your friends, to have one-on-one -on -one competitions, to play the things side by side, and, and have some degree of camaraderie, some degree of competition that is something you just really don't see anymore. My name is Gary Vincent and I am the president of the American Classic Arcade Museum that I founded back in 1998 and we incorporated in 2000. I've been in the coin-op arcade business for over 34 years. My name is Mike Stuhler. I'm the vice president of the American Classic Arcade Museum. I've been involved with the American Classic Arcade Museum since 2001. I've served on its board of directors since 2006 and have served as the vice president of the organization since 2013. Back in the, uh, the heyday of the arcade era, uh, I was uh, in junior high school. My involvement in the arcades were mainly to play the games, but also as a social experience. And that's something that's really lost on gaming today. With so much gaming being involved in consoles and, and online play and so on and so forth, we've kind of lost that social aspect of gaming. The golden age of arcades was just amazing. I, I lived it, I experienced it. When I got involved in it was the summer of 1981, and here I am now, you know, 34 plus years later, still doing it. My heart really is with these classic games. This is what started it. A lot of people ask me, why, why do you enjoy these the classic games? They're so simple compared to everything today. I always tell them, well, they may be simple to you, but go play them because they were easy to play but difficult to master. You needed to go up, be able to put a quarter in a game, and get some enjoyment out of it. I think ACAM means the place to go globally to come appreciate and play these games. If you want to come in here and play that rare game that doesn't exist anywhere, we're not going to put stanchions around it and just have you look at it. You're going to be able to drop that token in and you're going to be able to put your hands on the machine, you're going to be able to play it. I think it's very important to keep these older cabinets around and keep them in a place where people can experience them, they can enjoy them, and learn from them. These were the games that started it all. There definitely was a point where there were too many of them out there. You couldn't go anywhere without there being arcade cabinets set up. Aside from your traditional arcade, you would see them in restaurants, you would see them in bars, you would see them in the airport, you would see them at the car wash, you would see them at the gas station. They were everywhere. And eventually we reached a saturation point. In order for uh, people to get more and more arcade games out there to satisfy what was the need at the time, there were an awful lot of bad games put out there and just kind of flooded the marketplace with a lot of really bad games. The market cleaned itself out. And there is a small resurgence coming on now with chains like Dave and & Buster's and I see other places getting in on the whole bar slash arcade culture where they're putting older games in a bar environment and you know that's working for them. I'm sure over time there'll be new things coming along and who, who knows what the next big fad will be. My name is Mike Karen. Uh, my position is game tech and Mr. Fix-It around here, any loose ends. And I come from working on cars, um, landscaping, you know, lots, lots to do with my hands. Uh, Always loved arcades growing up as a kid, you know, always enthused with them. Um, got my first arcade machine by trading a transmission for an arcade machine. And uh, just from there, you know, take it apart, look at it. Was always intrigued how they worked now that I had the key to the machine. Some get more wear than others. Some we're lucky to have in the condition they are. And uh, some of them, you know, they're just banged up and it's hard to get around to them, especially with the pinball. Um, pinball keeps me really busy here. A lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts compared to a video arcade. You know, it's all time and money. Eventually, I hope we get to everyone, but uh, to keep them all running is a whole other job in itself compared to just restoring them and making them look pretty. Keeping them running is uh, a whole lot of hours. <laughs> we got the best of both worlds, and it's really hard to find a lot of pinballs like this in one, one spot with a guy maintaining them. I really like the location out of Burlington. It makes parking a lot easier. It makes it easier for families and people that I think really enjoy, you know, be able to come here with their family and have a beer and relax, have their kids play some games and be able to, uh, you know, share what they grew up with, with their kids. These games were all encompassing. 
everyone played these type of games in the arcades, from you know your traditional gaming nerd up through the, the high school jock. Everybody found a way to enjoy and relate to these games because they were so easy to engage and so easy to, to, to fall in love with. A lot of times the people today are using this as a form of escapism. It reminds them of their youth. It reminds them of, of things that they experienced when they were younger and gets them away from the day-to-day -day existence. It gets them away from the problems of their life and such. And to me, that's not a culture. That's just a way of life. That's just the way life is.